Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a kind of final build tips wrap up for the Rook 3D printer. I just want to say a big thanks to um, helping me hit 5,000 subscribers. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, I think the Rook pretty much doubled my subscribers. Um, I'm super happy all of you are interested in this printer. It's been really fun making it and I know there's a lot more coming with this printer and potentially other variations and such. So in this video here, I wanted to go over a little bit about the updated bed, talk about the wiring just a little bit, kind of just wrap up a couple little things here and there. Um, a couple things that I want to mention for printing out the Rook. Again, my default print settings for the Rook is three walls, 15% infill, and I generally print at 0 0.28 layer height. Um, these parts don't need to look pretty as far as layer height is concerned, and um, I want the parts to come out as fast as possible because I'm impatient. So that's generally uh, how I do my settings. Even on PTG, three walls, 15% uh, infill seem totally fine. You don't have to go crazy on the infill. I know it seems like, oh, go higher infill, get a much stronger part, especially for a printer that's mostly 3D printed, but um, the higher the infill you go, the more prone your parts are to warping and that type of thing. So um, just keep that in mind, choose the settings that you prefer. And um, yeah, so this is the updated bed. Um, I've eliminated the front two bearing mounts. They're simply just not needed. Um, I know it looks weird and it might seem like the bed is like less stable. However, the bearings uh, riding on these linear rods don't actually support the bed in the Z direction. All the work of that is done with the lead screws. Losing two bearings on the front doesn't make the bed any less stable. All the bearings are doing is keeping the bed from twisting in the X and Y axis and making sure that it's stable. And obviously this, this bed is not moving. It's still constrained by two points in the back. It's not moving in X and Y. So you only really need two bearings. This eliminates a whole bunch of binding issues that people may have been getting. So if you're having binding issues or you're just building this printer, I highly recommend building it with the updated two bearing bed mount. You'll probably save yourself a lot of issues. This bed is now even easier to print. It's less prone to warping, it's not as big, and it uses less material, prints a little bit faster. This bed will still be on GitHub, of course. If you do want the four bearing version, that's completely fine. Also, I do have the square original bed on there as well. So if anyone wants to run a V0 bed, there are mods to actually put a V0 bed onto a bed frame. You can check out the Discord for that. The Rook is really meant to be your printer. You can customize it however you like. So that is an update to the bed. I'm super happy with it. Um, I actually do believe I got better print quality once I swapped over to this bed. So honestly, um, it's kind of like the standard, but like I say, there'll be the other bed options in the GitHub for everyone. So let's just talk really quickly about wiring. Um, I know, especially for people uh, who are new to 3D printing or new to building printers, it can be a little bit um, daunting to actually wire up a 3D printer from scratch. It's actually not that difficult once you actually start getting into it. Some tips that I can give you, depending on the stepper motors that you purchase. So I actually purchased these NEMA 17s from Amazon. These are the cheapest stepper motors I can get in Canada. These are about $8 per stepper motor, which is really, really good. The cheapest I can find on AliExpress is about $15 per stepper motor. So I buy these from Amazon in Canada. Unfortunately, I don't know if they're available on um, 
other Amazon uh, sites, but the, you get two of these for like fourteen ninety nine or fifteen dollars Canadian. It's 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 a crazy price, um, or, or or nineteen dollars Canadian. It's it's really cheap. However, they come with these um, printer or these stepper motor cables. So they have the uh, stepper end, of course, but then they have these um, kind of black flat connectors, which do work on a main board. However, there's nothing actually that would hold them in and they'll easily fall out. They're not very useful, so I generally don't use them. You could, of course, for sure, cut the ends off of these and buy a crimping tool and crimp on your own stepper ends if you really want to that's totally fine you then have wiring included that's great generally what i'll do is i'll just buy stepper motor wiring um, pack off of amazon it comes in like 10 stepper motor wires it's relatively inexpensive and they have the correct ends on them so that's just a tip if you're ordering motors sometimes they will offer what kind of motor wiring you want just be careful and look at the pictures do your research it's not preferable to have these ones if you're not going to do your own cr um, crimping try to find motor wires that have the correct ends on them so that's a little bit of a tip there as far as actually wiring up the um, printer board here I'm using a standard AC 24 volt um, AC adapter so I literally just went on Amazon and again I bought the cheapest AC adapter that I could find this thing has powered so many 3d printers that I built it's not even funny it's a 12 volt 6 amp AC adapter it just has a barrel connector on the end and this is also my on off switch as well so when I plug this into the printer the printer turns on I don't have to wire a power switch or inlet or anything like that this is the most beginner friendly option and what happened was I also got with that AC adapter one of these ends so it's just basically a simple um, female end to that AC adapter where you plug in a positive and negative wire and I just literally run that right to the positive positive and negative of the board so this is the simplest power wiring that's possible if you bought a Meanwell power supply or something like that you will have to order a power inlet with a switch and you will have to wire it up so the wiring is a little bit more involved if you're a beginner and you're not too sure about wiring, I highly recommend just getting a, a really cheap 24 volt AC adapter. This 6 amp AC adapter, I'm pretty sure would run a 12 volt heated bed as well, especially if you limited the power to the bed. So it's not like you're going to be out of luck if you later on decide you want to run a heated bed with this AC adapter. This printer uses very little power even with a hot end and heated bed powering up it it's around five amps or something like that it's not that big of a deal and like i say if you limited the bed power to about 60 percent or 70 percent you'd be totally fine so that's just kind of the the route that i take um, for that um, again typical wiring for any of my printers i haven't even bothered with it right now i've just been printing on this printer i haven't really messed around with uh, cleaning it up or anything like that but on most of your boards your wiring is going to be pretty straightforward you're going to have your stepper motors on one side generally it starts with x y z and then extruder there's not much else especially on a printer that only has um, just a hot end no heated bed so essentially what i'm doing here is i've connected my two fans my one big cooling fan on the back here and my um, cooling fan for my hot end we have one thermistor for the hot end that goes into the the thermistor port here very straightforward and essentially that's it we have our heater wire here that goes into the E0 port and the wiring is essentially done um, it's it's very straightforward the only thing that I could uh, maybe put out there for a tip for wiring is if you do order additional stepper cables sometimes the wiring is not correct on this end 
So when you actually connect it to the stepper, you go to move the axis, you'll hear some vibration and the motor basically just kind of vibrates back and forth. It doesn't move. That's because you need to change the actual uh, pins here. You cannot burn out a stepper motor by doing this. I've tried. Honestly, all you need to do is, um, if I can show you here, there's just little tabs here. You just put in a little tiny flathead screwdriver, pop up the little plastic tab, and this wire will slide out. Just swap it with another wire and go for it. Generally, I think it's these two middle wires here that you can swap and it'll solve your issue. Look online, there's usually some color coding and um, you can fix your issue. Again, it's not too often, but some stepper motors, um, the wiring that comes with them will be slightly different than the wiring you get on Amazon. It's okay if you plug them in and they don't work, you're not gonna fry the steppers, just unplug them and um, rewire them. Like I say, just by, I usually do uh, this end, I believe. I'll pull one out here so you can see it a little bit better. But I'll usually do this end, so um, I'll stick in a little tiny flathead screwdriver and just press down that little metal tab, and this wire will pop out, and then I can swap the wires. So, again, sometimes when you order stepper wires, these colors are mixed up and the motor won't run. You just have to change the, the wiring, uh, and it'll work out there for you. So... The only other thing I can recommend uh, for people who are building this printer is I definitely highly recommend buying the Triangle Labs TD6S or TDS6 uh, hot end, the one that I recommend on the build of materials. It's a much better hot end than the Ender 3 style and it works really well with the cooling fan, my stock cooling fan on the back. An issue you can face with the Ender 3 style hot end is essentially this air is blowing directly on the hot end. If you're running the fan at 100% or 80 or 90%, it can definitely overload the hot end and you'll get an air and clipper and it'll shut down. That does not happen with the ceramic heated Triangle Labs hot end. It's a much more powerful heater and it doesn't, it is not affected by the cooling, the stock cooling. If you're going to run a cooling mod that are available on the discord that's totally fine this hot end is only like $15 more than an ender 3 hot end it's only $32 Canadian on Aliexpress and I highly recommend it it's a great hot end so that's just a little tip there for people who might be building the printer and trying to choose a hot end in my opinion you might as well just go with the triangle labs one and get a better get a better hot end right out of the box it's not that much more money um, but yeah, that's kind of uh, essentially the final tips video for this printer. Again, uh, definitely check out the Discord. There's tons and tons and tons of mods for this printer. People are building um, variations, whole variations of an entire printer off of this. There's cooling mods, there's groove mount, hot end mods. There are people going to be running this printer on Marlin. There's people running on Clipper, of course. Um, I did get RepRap firmware on this board. This is an SKR3 board and I did get RepRap firmware working on it. However, I didn't like the sensorless homing so I abandoned it and I just went to Clipper on this board. But RepRap firmware um, is an option too if you prefer that over Clipper and you don't want to buy a Raspberry Pi or a standalone um, board for Clipper, that's definitely an option. So yeah, this will wrap up the tips series for the Rook. And I'll probably have one more video, uh, kind of recent video coming out about this printer. Uh, we'll do some comparisons and kind of a fun video. And, uh, and then I'll kind of move on to um, a little bit more of a different printer. And uh, there's going to be a live stream coming up here to kind of celebrate the 5,000 subscribers. And uh, you may actually see the, the new brand new frame for that new printer on the live stream. So... Anyone who stick to the end of this video, there's a little teaser for you. There will be a printer announcement on the live stream that should be coming in about a week or two. I'll of course put some info on my Discord and I'll put some posts out there on YouTube so people are aware of the live stream. Again, thanks and thanks everyone for all of the support. Uh, if you want to support me on Patreon as well, it's in the description. You of course don't have to. Please like, share, and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys next time.